okay, we've done all the hard work, we've created our signals, we've fired the signals, we've also created how to subscribe to those signals, we've looked at a bit of the logic, which admittedly is a bit confusing, so we'll recap that in a second when I show you that logic data model page diagram again. So in this section, we're actually gonna go ahead and handle some of these callbacks. Coming back just briefly to our application logic diagram on the vplay docs, we have logic, we have data model, and the data model updates the page. So therefore, by default, our callback should be contained inside the data model because that will then update our page. So let's do that. Let's go to our data model.qml. This is inside the models folder. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to create a new private item that can't be accessed externally because that's good design. We don't want other things to change. So let's see where we're going to put this inside probably of our item. We're going to create another item. We're going to give this the ID of underscore indicating that it's private. We're going to create a function which is called the response callback. Simple enough. And this takes an object. So remember in our JSON client, we parsed out what the response from the server is using JSON. And if it worked, that was parsing the JSON that is, then we got an object. And this is precisely what we're gonna pass here. So we can test this out by saying response equals the object dot response. And that's specific to the uh, API that we're using. So you, you'll look for a response object. We we'll also get a code from the response. Now this isn't the HTML code, you know, like 200, 400, 404, whatever they are. This is specific to the API. So if you read the API's docs, it'll tell you what these are all about. So again, response, I, I can't spell, can I? I really can't spell, response with an S. Okay, response dot application underscore response underscore code. So that's the API docs for that. And then let's show this to ourselves. So console dot debug. And let's just say server returned. Let's say app code. And then drop in that code. So now we'll get something back saying everything is all good or not all good. Right, so the final thing we need to do is pass this response callback somewhere. And the logical place is when we search the listings and we go off and get our HTTP API data, we're gonna have it inside of here. So what are we gonna put in here? Well, we're gonna say, get our client and run that search function that we defined earlier. What are we gonna pass into it? Well, we're gonna pass in our search text. And what's our response callback? Well, it's this private item here with our response callback. Now let's go ahead and run this in the live player. And I'm hoping this is gonna work because I've been encountering, encountering an error as of late. So if we hit go, uh, we get that same error that I'm used to, error creating SSL context. Right, so it's trying to get an HTTP, but what's happening is in this API, it's actually redirecting you to the secure version, HTTPS. And what it's saying is I've got an error getting the SSL context. Now this is an error I've had before with Qt Creator, and to save you the hassle of finding out how to fix it, I'm gonna show you. So what we first need to do is <laughs> go to Stack Overflow and put error creating SSL context into that. It tells you to download OpenSSL, which I showed you at the beginning of this entire course. So go ahead and do that if you haven't already. And what we need to do is copy these three DLLs from the OpenSSL installation folder. Now, don't do this if everything's working for you, but it isn't for me, so we may as well save you guys some time. So where's my folder? It's normally under Program Files x86, OpenSSL Win32, and we want loads of lib files. So where are we? Let's see, lib eay. That's probably in a different folder in here. 
Let's see where it is. Okay, the reason I faded to black, I admit it, I messed up. Well, actually, OpenSSL messed up. The OpenSSL package I told you to install, if you installed version 1.1, it doesn't come with the DLLs that we require for some reason. They changed uh, who they get their DLLs from. I don't know why, nobody seems to know why, but it's a problem on the internet. So if you download 1.02, 1.0.2Q, and you install that, the Win32 version, and then you head over to your program files x86 open SSL Win32 slash bin, you will find all of the files that you need, these three files. So inside of here, if we just scroll down, we've got the lib EAY32 and nothing else. Well, let's let's continue down the mystery rabbit hole. Let's search for lib SSL32. So it does exist. It's in the application uh, installation folder. So I'm going to copy that. I'm just going to create a brand new... I'm just going to pop it on the desktop, actually. So the 32, we want also the bin, the lib EAY32. And I'm sorry about this, but I struggled with this a couple of days ago when it suddenly stopped working. And what else do we need? SSL EAY32. So is that in this folder? No, perhaps it's just in the installation folder. SSL, SSL EAY32, there it is. So we can copy that. And these are the three magical DLLs that we need. Now, I think that Qt Creator should have picked these up, but I installed a newer version of OpenSSL, so that was actually the problem. So now we're going to take these three, we're going to copy them like so, and we're going to paste them into our vplay SDK installation directory, vplay and vplay live. Now I believe this is where we need to put them, so let's just paste that in there. Let's switch back to our Qt Creator project hit live so it recompiles our project and hopefully now when we click go we might see something different there we go success passing json server returned app code 900 so it has actually returned something oh sorry about that guys that was a long way around but i i thought about not showing you all of this open ssl stuff but I didn't want you to have to suffer through it like I have. Right, so just for the future, those three libraries, the SSL libraries, you can put them in the vplay live folder so that vplay live actually works. And you might have to put them in various other build and debug folders in order to get them to work. It's something I'm discussing with the guys at vplay, so perhaps they can smooth this transition that OpenSSL is making so that things work properly in the future. Okay, so that's pretty much it for our callback object. So I'll just have a look at the code again. Let's go back to our QML model, data model. So all we've done there is we've said every time you get the signal to search listings, fire off the client.search, pass in that search text that's passed in via the signal and then also pass over this callback. So this callback actually knows nothing about anything else. All it knows is I'm being fired, I've been given some data which is the object that we passed back from our client. So if we look at our send request we passed in the callback there and everything works out we, pass the, we fire the callback there with our object. So that's all it is. This knows nothing about anything else. And that's how all good code should be.